And then when you have our, some of our black folk that go sit in front of a white man and speak ill of their people, I'm like, y'all, what are we doing? But um, a while ago, I had to come out and I spoke in reference to Netflix. Mm -hmm. That we had to boy, you know, I was asking folks to stand with us as we boycott Netflix for gender bias and color bias. Correct. And we were fighting for equality. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that I had become donkey of the day. When I heard Oprah say, and these are her words, not mine, she said, when I be stressed out and I be going through it after the show, I will come home and Gail could calm me down and put me to sleep. What you say? Now here's where it gets even better. Remember how Taraji said the trailers were infested? Yes. Our trailers blew up. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Ha ha. You're mad. Miss Wikiana. Miss Wig, Miss Wig. Miss Wikiana. Miss Wig. And then when you have our, some of our black folk that go sit in front of a white man and speak ill of their people, I'm like, y'all, what are we doing? Whew. Man, Monique don't stop. She blames everybody. It's Oprah, it's Tyler, it's Lee Daniels, it's Netflix. Now it's Will Packer. She went too far when she started blaming Will Packer on shit. That's my friend. That's my homeboy. Will Packer's done more for black actors and actresses than just about anybody in the last 10 years. I mean, he is basically showing Hollywood that black movies have a mainstream market. I mean, Takers, Think Like a Man, Ride Along, Stomp the Yard, Girl Strip. I mean, the dude is basically changing the game, and now you're going to say he's against you. When, honestly, he put you in a movie almost Christmas when nobody was putting you in movies. And he stuck his neck out, and he went to bat for you. And then you throw him in under the bus. I'm not going to sit back and let you slander my friend's name like that. Will Packer is a good, good person. That's a good brother, man. He helped change my life. So I ain't going to sit back and let you slander his name, Monique. Sometimes you got to take accountability for yourself. It's you. It's you. What can you do to change things? Stop blaming everybody else for your shit, man. Come on, Monique. Shit's getting old. Oh, Monique keeps messing up, man. And I like Monique a lot, man, but goddamn, Mo. She's going after everybody, you know? I she went after Steve. Steve Harvey tried to help her out, you know, on his show, and then and the next day, she's throwing Steve Harvey under the bus. I knew Monique went too far when she started going after Oprah. I was like, ooh, some shit you got to keep to yourself, man. <laughs> you can't go after Oprah. Oprah starts making phone calls. You ain't working no more, bottom line, you know? <laughs> Because th here's the thing about the entertainment business, man. When, when you ain't in movies like you think or TV shows like you think, your brain starts playing tricks on you. You start thinking there's a conspiracy against me. You know, people don't like me anymore. When it's really not the case, because you never know when your name's coming up behind closed doors for a movie or a TV show. Like, so when Monique went after Oprah, I said, God, Mo, don't do that. Because, you know, Oprah's got her own TV network, producing four or five movies a year. Monique didn't know what Oprah had coming up. Oprah might be getting ready to do the color purple, too. Celie had a baby. <laughs> She was gonna bring in Monique for Celie had a baby. <laughs> but I was just, I was just looking at like, I was looking at all the people Monique start going after. So it was, it was, so, it was so it's Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, Steve Harvey, Oprah Winfrey. You know, uh, then she went, she knows she went after my, my buddy, Will Packer. The same guy that put me in Ride Along Think Like a Man is the exact same guy that put Monique in that Christmas movie a few years ago. And Monique tried to compare Will Packer movie producer to Harvey Weinstein movie producer. And I thought that was a little too far. So I went on my Instagram page and I did a video directed towards Monique, right? Now I never called Monique at her name, nothing like that. I just said, listen, Mo, when you got a lot of different problems with a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons, it might be you, you know? <laughs> And I'm not stupid. I knew when I did the video, I knew I was gonna get some backlash, right? What I didn't know, I didn't know there was this thing out there called Black Twitter. I didn't know what the fuck Black Twitter was, right? All of a sudden, I do this video towards Monique, and man, Black Twitter's real. And they was in my ass for three days straight. If you don't know what Black Twitter is, if you say anything on social media that Black Twitter deems disrespectful to black people or a black person, they come after you. And I don't know how many people are on black Twitter. I don't know if they have an office building with cubicles <laughs> or it's a group text that goes out. I don't know. All I know is I did this video towards Monique and for the next three days, every time I got on Twitter, it was over a hundred mentions of my name and it was just black Twitter down the line coming after me. And everybody was kind of saying the same thing just in their own way. 
You know, stay in your lane. This don't concern you. Leave black shit to black people. So Monique went on her uh, boycott of Netflix. Mm -hmm. Lots of people had a lot of, uh, you know, interesting things to say. But the Monique challenge that you did with Telemundo (laughs) and the language bias was one of the funniest things that I had seen this year. Right. Hands down. Hello, my loves. I would like all of you to join me on Boycott and Telemundo. Recently, I pitched a comedy special, and they said no due to racial, gender, and language bias. They said they're a Spanish-speaking network, and I don't speak Spanish, so they wouldn't give me a special. They've given Gabriel Iglesias a special, I think. George Lopez, I've never heard him speak Spanish, like a few words, but it just goes to show the discrimination that's happening at Telemundo. Now, granted, I don't know Spanish, but I want to be a trailblazer. Plus, I had the beginning and end of my special. Hola, hello, gracias, adios, thank you, good night. I just got to fill in the rest. I can learn Spanish, but the fact that they wouldn't even negotiate and give me a special lets me know that there is racial, gender, and language bias in Telemundo. So please join me in boycotting the Spanish-speaking network. Thank you. Gracias. I was bored. <laughs> I was in my hotel room. I was in Seattle, Washington. I was bored, and then I saw her. I said, hey, my loves, and did the racial and gender bias, and that's what comedians do. I was like this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a funny one. And, you know, so there really wasn't much thought to it, but it, I thought it was funny. You said that they have a language bias because you don't speak Spanish. Right. I didn't get a special because <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, Monique said there was racial and gender bias. I said, there's a language bias in Telemundo. And then I said, they gave Gabriel Iglesias a special and George Lopez. I've never heard them speak Spanish. I've heard a few words. But <laughs> everybody know who he is. We sit in front of him and we just let this man say any and everything about us. And then we go right in with him. That, now, see, that to me is dangerous. Mm-hmm. And y'all babies that's good with this little computer, don't take my word. You can just go through the years of this cat just running his mouth. Mm-hmm. And it's like, stop doing that because what are we saying to the babies coming behind us? I had a little thing with Monique also. You know, I know you had the you little too? thing. Was that real? Monique. Oh, yeah, yeah. we did it well. I know you had the yeah, little thing. Yeah, I saw. Be like, you yeah, too, yeah, gang, yeah, gang, yeah, gang, yeah. gang, gang. Yeah. Well, I guess <laughs> in my, my thing with, with Monique was it wasn't, um, first of all, I like Monique, right? We never had an issue with her, but when she she was going in on Tyler Perry and Oprah and everybody else. And then she went in on a buddy of mine, Will Packer, who's mm. put me in numerous movies. Uh, I was just like, uh, I just it went, I went okay. on Instagram and I just, I didn't call her out her name or anything like that. I just said, hey, if you got a problem with a lot of people, it could be you. Yeah. At some point, I look in the mirror. And, uh, and so I, I knew I'd get some backlash, but I mean, it was just, I thought it needed to be said. Now, I had a meeting in David Talbot's trailer with Will Packer, David Talbot, and the first AD because they were being disrespectful to this black man, mm. and I was not going to allow that to happen. Okay. I had a conversation with the first AD, and I pulled him outside. I said, listen, brother, when it's your turn, I won't let nobody do it to you, but what I'm not going to do is stand by and watch you give a direction after the director gives us a direction. It confuses the cast, and it's disrespectful, and to that black man's credit, his eyes filled up with water, and he said, I appreciate you for having this conversation with me. Okay, Mm -hmm. so Will Pack and I are now at odds because I'm seeing how this brother's acting. I'm in my trailer. My assistant at the time, her name was Robin, right? Mm -hmm. Robin is in her 50s. Mm -hmm. She's in my trailer with her shoes off. She's on the computer. Will Packer's friend, or I'm not sure what title to give her, okay? Mm -hmm. She comes into the trailer. Now, in this trailer, it is me, my hairstylist, makeup artist, and my assistant. Mm -hmm. This young lady who we're all old enough to be her mother, Mm -hmm. she comes and looks at my assistant and said, what's your shoes doing off? You in your trailer, why do you care? I said, excuse me, you're out of order. You don't come in here questioning nobody in my trailer. As a matter of fact, and her energy was not that I'm playing. It was, what you, I said, as a matter of fact, I need you to go get Will. Because I'm not even going to have this conversation with you. I'm going to talk to your boss. When Will Packer comes into that trailer for us to talk, do you know what that man says to me and my hairstylist and my makeup artist and my assistant? 
I am the head nigga in charge. Everything stops with me. I said, well, I want to let you know this, Will. You're going to hear that you're the head nigga in charge from me as many times as I can tell people that's what you said. I said, and furthermore, you need to check your assistant because this is my space. We weren't in your trailer with our shoes off. We're in my space with our shoes off. But why would he come? Why would he come to you with that type of energy? What what led what led him to say that when all you ask his assistant to do was to go get him because she's questioning why That's people in your trailer have the truth. That's a good one. Because what I said to him was, who do we need to talk to? This young lady can't be up in here like that. And that's when he became the head nigga in charge. Uh. And then I said, who are you the head nigga in charge of? We have Danny Glover on this set. We have a legend and an icon. Are you the head nigga in charge of him? Are you the head nigga in charge of Kimberly Elise? Are you the head nigga in charge of Gabrielle Union? Are you the head nigga in charge of J.B. Smooth? Who are you the head nigga in charge of? So he tried to laugh it and joke it. I said, uh-uh. I don't play that way, brother. I said, the food is bad. Like, what we doing here? The food was slop. So when they say they didn't have any food, mm -hmm. the food we had, nobody ever ate that food because it was just like you can feed them anything. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets even better. Remember how Taraji said the trailers were infested? Yes. Our trailers blew up. Wow. They blew up. Now, what I, whenever this airs, I'm going to post the trailers blowing up so the people can see. Right. But they blew up. Oh, he probably will be sick. Anybody want to call me, man? He is attached to that dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if we was in that trailer? I know. He was bad, huh? Oh my god. 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 And if any of us were in those trailers, we would have been gone. Right. The trailers blew up. Now, when I was smelling the gas, we went to the brothers that was hooking up the trailers and we said, hey, we smell gas. Mm -hmm. They said, Mo, we let him know, talking about the head nigga in charge, we let him know. He just said, okay, and walked <coughs> away. I said, he what? He just said, okay, and walked away. The trailers blew up. Did Will Packer reach out to anybody? I can't say he didn't reach out to me and say, hey, is everything okay? Did you lose anything in the, in the, is everything good? The only thing they wanted to know from me was, where was Aunt May's wigs? Oh my God. Can you imagine if we was in that trailer? Oh my God. When I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken, mm -hmm on those platforms. It was painful to watch. And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to say, you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, mm. I'm just tired of working so hard being gracious at what i do getting paid a fraction of the cost mm -hmm. i'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over mm -hmm. um you get tired mm -hmm. i hear people go you work a lot yes. well, have to mm -hmm. the math ain't mathing mm -hmm. and when you start working a lot you know you have a team mm -hmm. big bills come with what we do yes. we don't do this alone the mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind That's us. Right. Yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million. No, that's not that. That didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, mm -hmm. Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed. Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. So... 
I just I'm You're tired. I'm a, I'm only human and and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling when it's time to renegotiate I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what I just did mm -hmm. and I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. It wears on you, you know. Mm -hmm. Cuz what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? What is it telling me? Yeah. And what does it tell me? Mm. Yeah. You know? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the fuck am I doing? I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, don't apologize. <sighs> don't apologize. I, I think it's an important message for people to hear because we see the lights, camera, action. Yep. Yep. And yep. then and they tell so me glamorous. we don't yes. translate overseas. Yeah. 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 I'm tired of hearing that my entire career, 20 plus years in the game, and I hear the same thing, and I see what you do for another production, and when it's time for us to go to bed, you don't have any money. Mm. They play in your face. Mm. And I'm just mm. supposed to smile and grin and bear it and just keep, like, mm. enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I have other things. I have my TPH brand. I have my mental wellness. I have other things because... This industry, if you let it, whew, it'll steal your soul. Yeah. But I refuse to let that happen. Yeah. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you got to keep on getting it until your turn comes. And I said, Taraji, most of us die before our turn comes. We got to ask for it right now. Now, I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister, broken, sitting on those platforms. Where's my raise? I haven't, had, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. And almost had to walk away from Color Purple. Because you know what? If I don't take a stand, how am I making it easy for Fantasia and Danielle and Hallie and, and, and Felicia? Then what, why, why am I doing this? If it's all just for me, what the, why are you here? Now, when I said it, when I said it. Why didn't it get the traction when you said it that when she said it, now all of a sudden everybody is coming, and I and I don't have a problem. I'm mm -hmm. glad. Yes. But if you said this a decade ago, and I yes. remember you saying it over a decade ago. But um, a while ago, I had to come out and I spoke in reference to Netflix. Mm -hmm. That we had to boy. You know, I was asking folks to stand with us as we boycott Netflix for gender bias and color bias. Correct. And we were fighting for equality. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that I had become donkey of the day yes mm -hmm. by leonard and i gotta call you by your name baby because Lenard, Lenard, yes. okay yes. okay baby he's getting real special leonard but we're going okay no, it, Lenard. It is Lenard. It is Lenard. and then i was called donkey of the day and it really caught me off guard mm -hmm. because when i met this brother some years ago and i always go back to it because i met him in an elevator at turner station and i met a young man that was full of humility and respect mm -hmm. And when I got on that elevator, he actually held the door. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yes, ma'am. And I said, oh, baby, thank you. And he was just like that. Yes, ma'am. And Miss Monique, it's a pleasure to meet you. And we had a very beautiful exchange. Mm -hmm. And I said to that brother, tell your mama that she raised you right. Mm -hmm. That's a and fact. And he said it was my mama and my grandmama. Yes, ma'am. So I felt like this was, and still is, a beautiful young brother making his way, but full of humility and respect. So we fast forward, and I become donkey of the day. So I didn't want to have it to be hearsay. I didn't want to have anybody exchange words that I may have said to him. So my husband and I wanted to come on so we could understand how I got titled donkey of the day. So why would you give a donkey today, Charlamagne? Well, I think it was due to the whole Netflix situation. You know, when I heard you say that, um, you know, you wanted us to boycott because of racial and gender bias. But then you went on to, you know, mention two brothers. And a woman. So I said maybe she should be more specific and say black woman gender bias. But then also just from a business aspect, I wanted to know why did you feel like, you know, you should have gotten whatever Chris Rock got, whatever Dave Chappelle got, or whatever Amy Schumer got. Because I feel like this is a what are you doing for me right now type of industry. Well, she didn't say what they got. She said she should have got more than she was offered. And then, Charlamagne, you brought up an old Netflix special. Mm-hmm. 
as well. But that was later on. But mm -hmm. my, my, my point was, like, you know, this is the what are you doing for me right now kind of industry. We all know Monique is a legend, but we also know that those things, those deals that Netflix are giving out are based off recent uh, stand-up shows, recent shows, recent concert, recent arenas, recent tours like that. So I just wanted to know why you felt like you deserved that much. Well, Daddy, would you like to start or would you like for me? Whichever you prefer. But, you know, if, if we're going to go back to the conversation uh, that we had with Robbie, it didn't start with the offer where the color bias and the disrespect transpired. It started from when we had our initial conversation after Monique got her reviews from the nights in which uh, Benjamin and Caitlin, who were representatives for Netflix, came out to see Monique, in which on two different nights they uh, saw her get a standing ovation, which subsequently gave them reviews of amazing and, and great show. So when we're in the midst of having the conversation prior to them giving the, um, the, the, the offer, we're in the midst, and he says, well, I want to make it very clear that, you know, people speak about Dave Chappelle, Amy Schumer, and what they got. I want to just make it clear, you know, so we can manage uh, expectations that everybody doesn't get those type of deal. Well, when we're in the midst of that conversation, the phone disconnects. We never reconvene. He never gets us back on. And our attorney looks, calls me up, and we speak, and we're like, well, that was strange. Are we going to get back on the phone or not? Because anybody who does business knows that this is the key time in which to build the value of your client. Mm. Then we came back with an offer that they allegedly had sent over that our attorney and I had never received. And then on that, it was a certain time limit in which we were supposed to respond. Well, we had passed the time limit because we never received it. When our attorney had asked them to uh, please resend the offer that they had allegedly sent, it was clear that it had never been sent in the first place. Hey, my sweet babies, I'm Monique. And I'm Sydney. And we're coming to y'all today to let you know we're standing with all the unions that are striking right now. And we have a story that we must share of our own with the community. Countess Vaughn and I did a show called The Parkers. The Parkers has now been on air for 24 years, and they're trying to convince us through our ownership of the show that we made absolutely no money. And it's baffling being that when you have a conversation with the executive producers and they allude to the fact that the show in its entirety, five years, was made for under $70 million. It went out of production in 2004, but by 2009, we see profit participation statements that show the program made over $700 million, but yet was in a close to a billion, if not a billion dollar deficit. So what we're asking you CBS is, can you please treat these two black women fairly? When our brother Dave Chappelle, who ironically had a deal with CBS, said he signed a deal out of desperation and it was a bad deal, they were able to go back and do the right thing and they made that deal fair and they paid Dave Chappelle what he rightfully deserved. What we're asking you, CBS, don't pay us any more, but don't pay us any less. And the reason why we're having this conversation out loud for the community to hear is this. We see the numbers and they still don't want to pay. What will happen to you when you don't even know the numbers exist? So we're asking you, and when we say community, we mean community as in the ones that's fighting for equality. Will you stand with us? CBS, will you treat us fairly? We love y'all for real, my babies. Why didn't it get the traction? Why didn't it get the support? Why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it? I think there's a few reasons why. Number one, it was the messenger. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Tyler's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producers. How dare you actually say our heroes' names? You're very specific. These are our heroes. How could you say their names out loud? Because they're the ones that did it. And if I don't say it out loud, now you see a woman that is swallowing that pain, that is so stressed out, 
Then you see our sister Taraji B. Henson sit on that platform. And I love that baby because she's a beautiful spirit. Mm-hmm. But to see her that broken, what our community was saying was we have a hard time. Some of us, we have a hard time seeing a strong black woman with a back straight and a chin up and a strong black man standing by her side. We have a hard time accepting that. But we can accept seeing a black woman broken. Now it's really serious because she's falling apart. Pay in any industry in some ways is very subjective. I I can only imagine in Hollywood it's even more so. What do you think is the reason that, you know, Hollywood executives get away with paying someone like Taraji less and not giving her a raise movie to movie, role to role? Well, you know, systemic racism is a part of everything that happens in this nation. But beyond that, I think that there's this thing where they pit people against each other, where the idea is, well, you know, if you don't want to do it, we'll get somebody else to do it. And somebody's rent may be due. And so they may take the lesser amount. And and we are we are lesser as a as a as an industry because we don't get to have the brilliance of someone as Taraji because they don't want to pay them what they're worth. And it's a fight that, you know, white actors don't have and white female actors don't have. And what she said that really resonated with me, Abby, was when she said, even if she fights and gets what she needs for this particular film, she has to start all over again the next time she gets a film. Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that. Right now, here's where. When you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio Mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his word. He is saying, wait a minute, hold up. We don't know this sister to be no bullshit. We know she a loud mouth. We know she'll say some shit off the wall. But what we know about it is she true to a word. And all I would ask you is one que- two questions. The first question is, did you not just say it was wrong? Tyler. Did you not just say it was wrong, Tyler? To say she was difficult for not doing something that she was not contractually obligated to do? Did you not say that you would feel that that was wrong? Or am I missing something? So the question I would say is... Okay, is there a number? You know, taking that back to them was just a huge problem, okay? And I'm going to say the same type of thing in a minute because I just watched your your podcast and it it really really broke my heart because, number one, I feel you. I feel feel the sadness that's from you in all of this. And I don't want you to feel that, I mean, especially for me. I can't speak for anybody else. But for me, I, I'm not anyone that wants to hurt or offend anybody, especially you. I think you are brilliantly talented. I think you should have a lot more happening since you won that award. I thought for sure that if you had campaigned and won it and played by their rules, what would have happened is in the next deal, you would have gotten more than my millions of dollars. And your career in the film would have been much different. I believe that much in your talent. So, so in, in saying all of that, in saying all of that, I just, I just say it's just, it's just heartbreaking because I don't ever want you to think that I'm not black, trying to blackball or say anything. But please give me what I say. This. I'm not trying to hurt you. I will never try to hurt you. If Monique asked Lionsgate for a favor and they told her no. And they ask it, she's asking for a favor that is not contractual, not something that they're contractually obligated to do. And they told her no. But then she went and told the world how difficult that they were. Do you think that that would be fair or unfair? No, that's not fair. It's not fair. So, no, so, so the question, so pardon, pardon me. So the question I would ask of you, good sir, because... I appreciate you being honest enough to answer that with a relative quickness. I really do. So the question that I would ask you is this. 
if we should do unto others as we would have them do unto ourselves, the question I would ask is, how do you sit back or how would you feel if someone said about you that you were difficult to work with because you didn't want to perform for them a function that you were not contractually able or obligated to do? How would you feel about that? Well, as I said, that's not fair. If I bring a movie, if I bring a movie to, for Monique over there, I'm going to have to say it. I'm going to have to defend it. I'm going to have to fight for it. Well, it's easy. It. It's easy because all you would be doing is telling the truth. You are six foot six black man. Come okay? on. Listen, I ain't got no problem, man. I ain't got no problem. Trust me when I tell you, I ain't got no problem. Well, that's why we saying, then, then say it now. Say it now. Say it now. I'm black and I'm proud. Come on. James Brown is counting. I'm saying it now. I'm gonna, I'm, I will let all of this fool off when I get back out on the press tour to promote my next thing. I know it's going to come up. <laughs> that is when I will talk about it. But, 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 no, 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 it's too hot. It's too hot. Y'all, y'all eat it up. You know you're not supposed to be recording people. No, no. No, no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been, he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Enjoy. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's illegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? After that came out, then you were on this whole situation with Oprah and Tyler. Everyone's mad at me. <laughs> What happened, Monique? What happened? I did a movie called Precious. Uh-huh, I loved it. I signed up for that movie with my friend named Lee Daniels. He said, it's paying $50,000. I said, let's do it, because it was an independent film, mm -hmm. okay? When we did the contract, he said, you have 5% of the film. We're not looking for nothing. We know this is a small, independent film. The film goes to Sundance and it begins to get all of this praise. Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey get involved with Precious. Okay. They become executive producers. That's wonderful, because you know when they put their name to it, here you go, it's get ready to mm -hmm. go through the roof. So when it came time for the campaigning of this award for the Oscar, and when it came time to go to different festivals and, and promote this movie, mm -hmm. but you're really campaigning for the awards. Well, I was in a position, I had the Monique show, I was doing the Queens of Comedy tour, I had little babies, and my third husband. So what I was not gonna do was make Hollywood the priority. I've already done the movie. I don't need to campaign for you now to say, I want this trophy, I've done the movie, I've done my part. I get a call from Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey says, I will send my private jet to come get you and bring you to, I wanna say, it was one of the festivals. And I said, sis, I'm in the bed with my man and my babies eating chips, watching Curious George. Tell him I said, I appreciate it and I love him, but I'm not gonna be able to make that one. About 10 minutes later, I get a call back from Lee Daniels. Lee Daniels said, I told you you didn't care about this. I told that. I told her you ain't care nothing about this. And it's not that I don't care nothing about it. It's just that my priorities wasn't that. I've already done my part, okay? The Hoodie Awards come up with Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry is there. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me into his room. He has a staff of people there. He does like this, and everybody disperses. Oh, wait a minute, do it again, Monique. Oh. And everybody disperses, except for my security. I said, you don't work for Tyler Perry. 
So everything I'm saying, there's has always been someone else there to hear what's happened. So we're sitting there and Tyler says to me, listen, you may want to campaign for this because if you get nominated, your next film will be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next film is five to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler, look at me. I'm a black woman. Where they do that at? Those aren't the, sal the salaries that we're going to get. He said, oh, no, no, no. If you just campaign, I'm telling you right now. I said, Tyler, I cannot do a song and dance. I have no contract with Lionsgate. I have no contract with you, with Oprah. The only person I had a contract with was Lee Daniels. Right. And I fulfilled my contract. Mm. Now, if anybody else wants me to do anything else, there's a price to that because what we're not in is slavery. So what I cannot do is work for y'all for free. So Tyler Price says, well, I think outside the box, and I'm not scared of them white boys, so you know, I'm just trying to tell you for your own good. Well, if you think outside the box, and you're not scared of those white boys, why are you trying to tell me to do something that I'm not contractually obligated to do? Okay. I never worked with Tyler Perry. Okay. Um, the way that that relationship came about okay. was, firstly, Daniel was making the call because he was mad. <laughs> Because he thought Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey was trying to steal his movie from him. So those were the first phone calls I was getting, baby. And he was reading them for life. Okay, calling them all things, all the things, right? So then Tyler Perry and I had a conversation at the Hoodie Award. At the time, it was called the Hoodie Award. When they were trying to get me to go do all of this press internationally. And for those that don't know, who put on that hoodie award? Steve Harvey put on the hoodie awards in Vegas, right? So it just makes me smile the way this whole scene went down. So I'm beckoned to go into Tyler Perry's dressing room, okay. right? I'm beckoned. So I go into Tyler Perry's dressing room, and there are about maybe 25 people on Tyler Perry's team. And he does this. Like that? And everyone leaves. Well, I have my security with me. And I looked at my security and like, you don't work for Tyler Perry. So my security stayed in the room. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, you may really want to consider promoting this film. Because if you get nominated for an Oscar award, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler, who are you talking to? I'm a black woman. Where do they pay those type of salaries, brother? I said, what I cannot do, Tyler, is work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I cannot go overseas and do this for free, Tyler. So then he goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not gonna do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we are on the same page. And then fast forward. Fast forward. Things, you know, everything kind of comes out with Lee, Oprah, and there's an audio conversation that you guys had with Tyler. I got a call on my cell, and her and I would just so happen to be standing together and that's when he called me in looking for Monique to say, hey, I'd like to speak with y'all because I heard your podcast, I could hear the hurt, and you heard the audio. What have I taken from Oprah? When did I have Oprah's mother and father on my show? Mm -hmm. When did I have anybody come and speak about Oprah Winfrey on the Monique show? That's never happened, so how could she feel that way? Would you have done that? Had her family on? Yeah. Let me tell you how we operate. When we had the Monique show, there was a comedian on there. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to joke T.I.'s wife, Tiny. My husband walked out in the middle of his set. He said, cut. He said, brother, we don't do that here. We uplift our folks. Mm -hmm. We don't play that. So no, I would not have done that. When Oprah Winfrey had my family, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell y'all, and I'm looking, over, I'm looking around, baby, because there are people here. Yes. Okay, and I don't yeah. want to be rude to the people at Shay Shay's club. You got other people in the club, mm -hmm. right? When Oprah Winfrey called me up, 
And she said, I got a call from your brother. And this is after I won the Oscar Award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show, and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you. And he wants to tell other people how to wa look out for a predator. Right. I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get in the way if that cat is a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I hung up that phone, Shannon, I was like, I appreciate that sister. Like she didn't have to call me. She didn't. She didn't have to call me and say, right. I'm going to have your brother. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father. And my other brother, who used to be my manager, mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage, right? right? On Monday's Oprah show, Monique's older brother, Gerald, comes clean about sexually abusing his sister. Why do you want to be here today, Gerald? I'm here today to first acknowledge what I've been in denial for for 37 years. And that is, I did assault, uh, inappropriately touched my sister in manners that were not comfortable for her. And for that, I apologize, and I'm humbly sorry. Two years ago, Monique revealed she had been molested by her brother and used that pain to give her Oscar-winning performance in Precious. Some may think that you're only doing this to get into the good graces of your sister now because she has an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, I'm doing this to apologize to my sister to hopefully bring back some family unity. As for their relationship now, Monique recently told Barbara Walters there is none. Did your brother ever apologize to you? The apology that I got from my brother is, if you think I did something wrong, then I'm sorry. They were my exact words to my sister. Well, there's no more if you think I did it. You were absolutely right with what you said. I did it. I'm not proud of it. Monique, I'm sorry. We never talked about my mother being there. She never told you that. You know how you feel about your grandparents? Yes, absolutely. You know the honor and the, how you speak about them? Mm hmm Imagine you then seeing your granddaddy and your grandmama on a show, and they're talking about somebody that violated you, and that woman didn't tell you that they were going to be there. How would you feel? I would feel like you feel like you felt betrayed. That is exactly how I felt and how I feel. And it's not, oh, I'm in a, no, I understand it. But you betrayed me, sister. And I'm not the only one. Because at the time when she called you, she said it was just your brother. Just my brother. And when my mother was on that show, do you know what I had to deal with, Shannon? What's that? I would be in the store. And I would have elderly women coming up to me. And they would say, your mama ain't shit. Wow. Now, they wasn't lying, Shannon, okay? <laughs> they wasn't lying, baby. Sometimes you got to let the truth be the goddamn truth. Sometimes you got to just go with it. But still, it's my mother. It's your mom. And I'm in here and I'm, because when she wa I'm having to defend something. And I got that often. With them telling me what my mother wasn't, because you did not tell me. Had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mama, I would have said, shut that it's shit crazy. down. I don't need nobody seeing my mama be greedy. I don't need the world see. Shut it down. Now, there's a white woman named Barbara Walters. Mm -hmm. They called her first. And she said, Monique, I told your family, I can't do that to you. Well, Atlanta's a good place to raise your two little boys, isn't it? Atlanta is an amazing place. I should warn you that parts of her story are disturbing. And if you have very young children, you may find some of this inappropriate. What would winning an Oscar mean to you? It's a great accomplishment. And it's that kid in the bathroom mirror with the bathrobe and the bath towel wrapped around me with the brush in my hand, saying, I would like to thank. It's that same Did you do girl. that when you were yes. a little kid? You already thanking people for yeah, awards? Baby, I did that. I signed autographs because, <laughs> and people say to me, well, did you think that this would ever happen? And my response is yes, because if I didn't think it, why get in the game? You know, there has been that backlash 
of some critics saying that this movie is, is uh, uh, makes black people look bad, <laughs> this terrible, abusive family. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? I say that this terrible, abusive family is colorless. We were just the people that were chosen to be Precious and Mary Jones. But Precious and Mary Jones is every color, every gender, it's, it's universal. You've said that you understood Mary Jones. Yes. What did What did you understand? See, I knew Mary Jones. Mary Jones was my oldest brother. I want to go to that. Okay. Because you went to a very dark place to play this. Mm -hmm. And you said that your older brother, what, 10 years older than you? Mm -hmm. Your older brother you described as a monster. Mm -hmm. And he abused you. Yes. From the time you were... Seven. Seven. How did he abuse you? Are we talking about sexual abuse? Yes. Sexual abuse can be someone touching your breasts, someone rubbing your vagina, someone rubbing your behind, someone rubbing up against you with their private parts. So for me to go into detail... Okay, but did he do all that? Yes. Why didn't you tell your parents? I think for the same reason most people don't tell. You're afraid. I was afraid of my brother. At what point did you tell your parents? I was 15 when I told. Did they believe you? Yes. Did they do anything to him? In the moment, he was asked to leave. And that was pretty much it. The movie The Butler, mm -hmm. that movie was offered to me. Mr. Strong uh, tweeted out to the world, setting the record straight, Monique was never offered The Butler or Empire. I tweeted that brother back and I said, Mr. Strong, will you speak as loudly when you realize that you're wrong? Now, I have no animosity towards either one of those brothers and I understand what Mr. Strong is doing. He's defending his friend. And if his friend says to him that did not happen, He's being a friend and a great business partner. I want you to clear up something, because I just saw something. Okay. Um, that was shared with me, and I saw it. I know this is to be true. There is a script of the butler sent to you mm -hmm. and to Sydney from Lee Daniels Management. It came from his office. It is a script of the butler. Yes. Yet, in all of the social media and the post and the back and forth, they are saying that that never happened that you were never offered a part in empire or the butler but i just saw yes. the script from the butler from lee daniels team to your team so something as my grandmother would say may she rest in peace there's a fly in the milk here sydney i think keith sweat said it best something 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 just ain't right you better know those lyrics hey, okay that's what i do <laughs> so let's talk about um the empire and Taraji and you know people are saying well she wasn't offered that part either yes you know the one thing that I want to say in reference to my sister our sister Taraji P. Henson Cookie Lines was meant for that sister mm -hmm. no one else could play that role the way she is playing that role and we're saying please keep supporting that entire cast of Empire because what they're doing is amazing. They're breaking records. And when people wanted to make this a uh, Monique versus Taraji, mm. that's not what this is by no means because that's our sister. Right. And we're supportive and cheerleading her on. However, this has nothing to do with that. So we wanted to clear it up. Guys, this is not me saying, oh, I'm mad with Taraji or Taraji has a problem with me. By no means. Me and that sister ain't doing nothing but hugging each other with our arms wrapped around each other saying, baby, go get yours. Go do it. With the butler, you just saw that script. I saw the script. Now, you don't normally get scripts just to read a script just to read it. Mm -hmm. I was off at the part of Gloria. With Empire, and as Sydney said, more to come, I was offered the part of Cookie. Now, I don't have an issue with Mr. Daniel saying, you know what? They want to go with Taraji. Right. No problem. But the way that played out is a problem. And now to be saying Monique was never a thought. We never even wanted to hire Monique for this. Well, again, 
when you're st- when you start seeing the communications that went back and forth, mm-hmm. what I have said publicly, and I'll say it now to Mr. Daniels and to Mr. Strong, and with Mr. Strong, who's actually making the statements, this I was is, never offered. This tweet, Danny Strong. Monique was never offered roles in Empire or The Butler. Hashtag setting the record straight at Lee Daniels sent. And I appreciate him saying that because Mr. Strong, from his perspective, could be telling the truth mm-hmm. because he's not on any of the communications. This is the first time I've heard of Mr. Strong. Oh, wow. So Mr. Strong could be really thinking right. that if me, he and Lee talked and Lee says, well, I've never sent her anything. He's supporting his friend right. and his business partner. And we get down for people like that that say, I'm going to take a stand with my friend. But as I've said to Mr. Strong, Will you speak as loudly when you find out that those things aren't true and I was offered those things and I'm not just pulling it out the air Mm -hmm. because what they're doing is they're putting my character in question and they're putting my reputation in question as if now I'm this I'm just screaming and saying, oh, look at what happened. By no means. I'm not angry with anybody. I understand the game. However, what I can't let you do is go out and speak things that you know not to be true, especially when Mr. Daniel says Monique is difficult. And I'm like, Lee, when have you and I ever had a difficult moment? What does that mean to you when someone says you're difficult? Lee Daniels came out and said, I did offer Monique the butler. It took me a long time to realize. I am so sorry for hurting you in any way that I do. But as he said to me, he said, Mo, at the time I didn't have no power and I didn't have no money. So when Oprah said she wanted it, so who played the lead role in The Butler? Oprah Winfrey. Lee Daines was getting ready to do a biopic on Richard Pryor, and he offered me the grandmother. Who then calls Lee Daniels and says, I want to be the grandmother. So as you're looking at me, it's the same way I'm looking at that sister. And I'm saying, why don't we sit down and have a conversation? Because the way things could look, it may not be that way, but just the way things look, Oprah. Just the way you would have my family on your show, Oprah. I'm going to bring this up. I wasn't going to do it. But damn it, this is, this seat, tell I say, you might want to have another look, example. Look, this seat make you go, truth, tell it. No, <laughs> tell the damn truth. God damn it, tell the truth. It, because family is sacred. It's supposed to be. And we don't cross the line with family. Mm-hmm. And people begin to get comfortable to jump on the Monique bandwagon of Monique doing things wrong. And she doing this and she doing that. And there's a brother named D.L. Hughley. Yeah. And until he take accountability, I won't let it go. What? Because. What would you get ready to say? I was going to say, what did D.L. do? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, that voice went up, didn't it? D.L. is friend. He like, that's my friend. No, I, I, I've met D.L. on several occasions. I don't know D.L. like that. Okay. Do, I, do I know D.L. say like I know an earthquake? No. Do I know, uh, since I've interviewed Kat, had several conversations with him, do I know DL on that level? No. Right. See, when we say family is sacred, right? family is sacred. And we know that you don't cross the line when it comes to family. Correct. Right? I do DL's t- uh, radio show. Yes. DL Hughley is not there. His team is there. Mm-hmm. And Shannon, we having a great time. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going for back and forth. When we get to the end of the show... They say, Monique, you want to play a game? Well, I want to play. I said, sure, sugar. Let's play a game. And it's a game called Would You Rather. No. Oh. Okay? Now. Monique, you already, you should have said, I'm too old for this game. Wait a minute. We're having fun, baby. <laughs> right? We're having a good time, okay, Shannon. Okay. okay. We. I mean, it's the sister there and it's two other guys. We're having a great time. It's okay. a beautiful black unity cookout. Okay. We're having a good time. Okay. Would you say your wife was your family? Is that considered family? Yeah. So your husband is considered family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom 
or Corinne Steffens without one. Really, Monique? Now, as y'all are watching right now who haven't heard this story, y'all going, huh? they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, huh? okay. That is exactly what happened. Now, I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is Jasmine, how could you ask another sister that? Well, we just planned, I said, tell me the joke in that because I don't know what you're insinuating. Then you're involving people that have nothing to do with nothing. Like, what are y'all doing? So I said, I'm going to call my brother. DL, I'm going to call my brother. I call DL Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby. Yeah. Huh? That's how he responds. Yeah. Did he know it was you? Yes, he, because they called him to tell him, no, Monique's going to be calling. Right. Like this, it was getting crazy. Right. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother. Right. Yeah. Hey, DL. Yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team and they wanted to play this game. Would you rather? And it was like st stupid, like asking me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens and his exact words. Well, that's how we do it. I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? All right. I, I, I'm taking time to respond to Monique again. She made another greasy ass video with her daddy. Um, we kind of relitigating some of the stuff she said on Club Shay Shay, where she talked about how she was on the show and somebody, you know, they played a game. Would you rather? And I guess she felt like they insulted her husband's sexuality, which is interesting because she can always talk shit about everybody else's sexuality. But I guess her husband's sex was like, he's off limit. But a hit dog will bark unless his mouth is full. But she talked about, well, she didn't actually call her lawyer. Who the fuck would be afraid of your lawyer? Your lawyer, you mean the lawyer that did your contract? The law, That lawyer, the lawyer from the firm of Negro, 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 from Ghetto, Got Him and Gone, that lawyer? Who the fuck afraid of him? He couldn't get your name right on a ticket. He gonna get it right on a, on a legal document. It didn't happen because we decided it shouldn't happen. We didn't, you didn't need to, because we respect people. We don't have to do things for, t for, for clicks. They took it off because you asked me to, because I respected you at the time. You also talked about how I um, disrespect you on so many platforms, uh, but you have yet, you have this impeccable memory where you can tell to the degree, well, who did what to you and why and what happened, where you were, but you can't pull up one time on any platform that I said anything about you at all because you know you're lying. You got that piece of paper and that big ass memory, but you can't pull one up. My biggest mistake is saying yes to you. I should have said no when you came on my, you couldn't come on my radio show. I should have said no that I wasn't playing those dates with you. As a matter of fact, I, almost anybody who says yes to you at some point is, is, is in this milieu with you. Almost anybody. So I would suggest anybody out there, you could say yes to drugs, but say no to Monique. You talked about how, um, you, my children, families are off limits. They weren't when you were running across Vegas. I mean, on the stage in Detroit, they weren't when you talking shit on social media. When you got your ass whipped and your tickets dropped, then they became off limits. But let's do this. Let's decide that you will treat my children like you treat yours, like you don't know them, invisible, like you have no relationship with them, like you're estranged, you're, like you're unfamiliar, like you don't know them. You also intimated that I was coward. You know what I'd never do? I would never let my woman take care of me. I would never let my woman get evicted from her apartment. I would never let my woman has to ask another man for money. I'd never do that. Can your old man say the same? He loves you. Of course, he got to say that. You claim him on your taxes. He's a dependent. He's sitting there with you right now. Uh-huh and everything. Because it ain't like he does anything else. But you never address the salient point. I said that if you spent as much time writing your Netflix special... As you did, arguing about getting it, it wouldn't have been trash. It was. I didn't say it. I defy anybody out there. Stop listening to me. Watch it. Read the reviews. Read the reviews. You beg for something. You made valid points that women are underpaid, that they're not valued. That's absolutely right. So you would think that when you got a chance to do something that you would argue for, you'd be up for the challenge, but you shit the bed because you never are ready for it because all you ever do is complain about what you don't have. You're never ready for the moment because you're always living in the past. I said it. You, if you spend half of your time doing, as opposed to talking about who didn't do for you and what they did for you, you'd be a lot further along. You wouldn't be evicted. 
You wouldn't be working for your man. You wouldn't be asking other comics for money. So you got all the ingredients. Take that piece of paper that you're running down the list with and that pen that you got and that daddy six next to you, that daddy sitting next to you and do what you can't do, do what you never do. Write a fucking joke. When I watched DL say she went after my wife, she went after my daughters. I want to really be clear who I went after so that there's no confusion here. When I was on stage, when I'm on stage and we are performers, we are performing to the audience in front of us. When I was on that stage and I said, it must be hard to perform oral sex. But differently. Okay. On a coward. That had nothing to do with Mrs. Hughley. That insult was directed straight to you, DL. That had nothing to do with your wife. That was straight to you. So it felt like you were trying to pass it off as if I was going after your wife. When it comes to your daughter, to the baby that you did a post about, you did an interview about, I didn't do that interview. Man touched my child, which nothing could be further from the truth. They were both 13 years old. They were, boy, they were, they were friends that had grown up together. And, and this is something I lament to this day, denied that she, I said, well, you know, that's what kids do. And I, I will never forgive myself for not A, believing her and, and B, handling it the way I did. I simply reposted what you said. So when you say, Monique, you went after my daughter, that's untrue, DL. I posted what you said. And then when you said on, on your when you were really going for it with your shades on, and you said, Monique said, I stood by and watched my daughter be raped. D.L. Hughley, that's your conscience talking to you, brother. I never said that. I never said that. And I want to be a little clear about something else. Never would I try to do anything to harm any of your babies, because we got babies too. So never would I try to do anything to harm your children. However, what I was saying to your daughter and to the other daughters out there, I know what it's like for your daddy to know you've been touched and he not protect you because my daddy did the same thing. That, that's what that whole point was. But I was showing why I would call you a coward, brother. I don't think it's brave that you didn't protect your baby. So when I said what I was saying, let me be clear to you, D.L. Hughley, it had nothing to do in reference to your family, and you know that. Now, when you were speaking and you were going off and you said, um, uh, what did he say? She was so offended by the game we play, but you didn't say what the offense was. And that's the part for me that is disheartening, that you continue to try to trick and smoke and mirror our people. If you're going to say it, say it all the way through. When you say family is sacred, you are absolutely right, baby. You're right. But when you say would my husband rather, and you co-sign your team of people doing that, well, isn't my husband sacred? So you got to be careful in your words because the very words you use, DL, they're going to come back and they're coming back to bite you, baby. And what I also said on Club Shay Shay, when I looked in that camera, I said, DL, I love you, brother. And I don't know if you didn't hear that part, but we really do. We love you, brother. And if ever you get courageous enough, to want to have a conversation, we're always open to it because doing that, it shows how our community can get better. When you're wrong, as we have said to you, hey, brother, we apologize on that one. Yeah, incorrect on the cease and desist. And I want to add one more thing. When you spoke in reference to your daughter being a reason why Monique stopped speaking about it, what you don't even understand out of love for you out of love for you. See, you can have a problem with your brother, but you're not going to take it out on the kids. And we respected the fact that she tried to defend you, but we got three big ass sons. 
that if we were to think about it in the same way that she thought about it, what would that be? But out of love for you, we're not going to go after your child trying to protect the father that she loves. But one could argue based upon what you said about yourself, had you exhibited the same type of love and protection for your other daughter that your other daughter tried to exhibit towards you, there never been, would have been the commentary that you made about yourself. And I liken it to Brother Corey Holcomb, who I don't know, but I got a lot of respect for him because I heard him say something in an interview. He spoke about how Earthquake's son had came to one of his shows and the young man was hesitant about introducing himself or reintroducing himself because of the rift between his father and himself. And Brother Corb was like, come on, man. No, 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 no. You come over here and I'm going to give you love because that was between your father and I. And it made him reconsider the whole thing and reach back out to an old friend. In my humble opinion, that's what real men do. We come from the old school. We're not going to have no problem with your children because we love them and we love you and we want y'all to win. Not at the expense of the community, though, being demeaned in order to get followers. But for the, from the standpoint of if we come together, if we come together, we're going to win just by default. What else do you see in their eyes? that lets you know that you can get away with it. Because nobody's choosing any child. I say this to all my girls at school. Nobody's choosing any child who has the confidence and the self-esteem and is going to, yeah. th th that, that they think tell. is going to we'll tell. Scream. Nobody's choosing anybody yeah. that they think is going to tell. We arrested a former employee of, uh, who was working at Oprah Winfrey uh, Leadership Academy for Girls. She was arrested yesterday for several charges, including uh, assault, indecent assault, uh, as well as uh, soliciting girls under the age to commit indecent assault. And uh, she's now at the Ferenheim police cells. I bless you in removing your child from the school, big school, because my number one priority is the safety and well-being. Transformation and asset building for these girls. So every single girl's gonna leave here with something greater to offer the world than her body. We Everybody has a story. It. Everybody yeah. has a story. And so I think this is a watershed <laughs> moment. And if we make this just about Harvey Weinstein, then it, we will have lost this moment. So Rose McGowan has put Oprah on blast. Rose recently called out Oprah on Twitter over her past associations with some controversial men. Rose wrote, quote, from being pals with Harvey Weinstein to abandoning and destroying Russell Simmons' victims, she is about supporting a sick power structure for personal gain. She is as fake as they come. because he repeated so many times, it's going to be good for you. I have something in mind for you. We're gonna be in touch. And he was with people in which I admired dearly. He was with Naomi Campbell. He had Oprah Winfrey there with him, who entered the room and was swinging off his arm and just seemed like a very dear friend. Meet Sava, a young and talented girl who has always dreamed of following in her pop star mother's footsteps. With a voice that could move mountains and a passion for music that burns deep within her soul, Sava seems destined for greatness. But little does she know that her dreams are about to take a twisted turn. Sava's world is turned upside down when she stumbles upon a shocking revelation about her parents. As she delves deeper into the dark secrets of her family's past, she begins to question everything she thought she knew about herself and her loved ones. The sinister truth she uncovers threatens to shatter her dreams and change her life forever. With each page, the suspense intensifies as Sava embarks on a journey of self-discovery, navigating the treacherous waters of fame, deception, and the haunting legacy that her parents have left behind. As she unravels the web of lies surrounding her, Sava must confront her own fears and make heartbreaking choices that will determine her fate. Ew. 
like JK, but like maybe not. But thank you for watching. But you hating ass bitches always have something to say. Hating ass bitch, but you're still watching my vids. What? 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 <laughs> you're so upset. But that's like okay because have a piece of bread, have a Xanax, relax because I said what I said.